So quantum physics at A level, what's it really about? Well, I suppose it really builds upon the work that you might have already done on the chapters on waves or looking at maybe some of the particle physics. And basically, we think about particles, perhaps we've got these electrons here, which I'm representing with these bits of Lego. The particle model maybe explains what's happening in a lot of chemistry, it explains what's happening uh, if we think about electrons going around a circuit, but that's a model for explaining the world around us just like we can use the wave model to perhaps explain the behaviour of light when it, it does things like refraction and reflection and so on. Now these are both models that we can use in physics but sometimes they don't quite explain everything that we actually observe around us. And one example of this is something called the photoelectric effect. And this is really to do with the surface of materials including metal. So perhaps we had an electron on the surface of that material. If we were to look at um, shining light on it, sometimes if you energize that surface by shining light on it, or other sorts of electromagnetic radiation, we can get the electrons to leave. So effectively you've got light coming in that energizes the surface, the electrons gain energy, and then they can escape. Now the thing is, the wave model of light doesn't explain how electrons can leave or not leave at certain frequencies. And really, what we can say is that although we often think about light as a wave, light can also be thought of as a small bundle of energy, a packet of energy, and therefore a particle. And here, I've got what we call photons. Now, the energy of a photon of light is equal or it's proportional to the frequency. So when you've got something which is a higher frequency, perhaps we have some blue light over here. These blue photons have a higher frequency and a corresponding higher energy. And we say that E is equal to HF, where H is just a constant. So effectively, the higher the frequency of that electromagnetic radiation, the higher the energy. And you might have seen that at GCSE. If you've got things like X-rays or gamma rays, they are more energetic, and that means they're more ionising, than things like microwaves and radio waves. And basically the photoelectric effect can only be explained with the particle-like nature of light, where effectively one photon interacts with one electron. Okay? In actual fact, the energy of that photon, um, it has to overcome something called the work function of that material, um, so that's as the electron maybe leaves the surface, and then any extra energy it has um, is then the kinetic energy of that photoelectron as it moves away. But that will all be explained as you go into A-level. Something else um, that uh, we actually look at, and this is something you might have seen, is electron energy levels. And this is really inside the atom, so not just material on the surface, but this could happen inside. And effectively, um, electrons can exist at different energy levels with inside the atom. And what they can do is they can move up an energy level uh, if it absorbs some energy, and when it drops back down, it emits a photon. Now, if it does a big drop, perhaps from here to here, it's going to give out a lot of energy, and because E is equal to HF, that means that maybe this photon it gives out is perhaps a green um, photon, maybe when it goes through a different energy change and maybe drops from this level to this level, it gives out a different amount of energy and therefore a different frequency. And depending on the size of the energy gap, it gives out different coloured or different frequency photons. Now, if you were to look at that, you maybe energise something, perhaps you heat it up, perhaps it's um, with an electric field. What we then see is something called an emission spectra. Okay, so maybe when you have this particular type of element, it only gives out light in these colours. Okay, now you might have seen again something similar at GCSE, especially if you were looking at space and the redshift of starlight. Because what we often then have is an absorption spectra. And you can see it, this is basically um, the different colours or, yeah, the different colours of light which are absorbed by um, that element. Okay, so effectively these are the photons that this can absorb because the electron can go, only go between certain energy levels. So that's an absorption spectra and this is an emission spectra. And when we look at starlight, we look at how the spectral lines are shifted often towards the red end as that thing is moving away from us. We have something called 
wave particle duality. And basically what this means is that the wave model on its own isn't enough and the particle model on its own isn't enough. And we actually combine the two to actually think about how things behave in real life. So sometimes things appear to behave as a wave. If we're thinking about light, it can refract, it can diffract, and that's wave-like behaviour. But light also behaves like a particle, which explains a photoelectric effect. Conversely, electrons, which we often think about as these small particles, they also have wave-like behaviour. And in actual fact, the wavelength is equal to h, the constant that we had over here, over the momentum of that particle. So even things that we consider as particles also have like a wave-like property as well. And in actual fact, we can get electrons to diffract. Okay, so we can send electrons, um, they behave as a wave as they're traveling along, and this means that they diffract, and we can actually see that diffraction pattern in the lab. This also explains in a way why we only have distinct, certain distinct energy levels where electrons can exist. And that's because inside the atom, we have a standing wave set up of these electrons as they're orbiting the nucleus, and these can only exist in certain, or um, I guess, predetermined levels. But again, it gets a little bit complicated, but you will cover this as you go through A-level physics. So nothing here is anything like you've done at GCSE beforehand. And also you can take this and you can run with it. You can maybe watch other videos on YouTube. You can do some reading because the quantum world gets really, really strange. You've got quantum tunneling, quantum locking, all of these different bits and pieces. But in terms of A-level, this is often taught in the first year after you've been looking at waves. And what we tend to look at are the photoelectric effect. We've got electron energy levels and we've got this wave-particle duality.